My name's Carter Burke. For those of you who don't know me, I'm one of the two Texas contingents, although Chris is sick. I don't know. That's a bummer he's not here. But usually I talk about antennas. Everybody kind of thinks of me as the antenna guy. I'm going to shift gears this time and do something completely different. And I don't know where Fernie went. And Fernie, this is kind of goes off your site survey thing is another consideration that you didn't put is aesthetics. And what are you going to do with the product, with the environment? Because what we're seeing is people want to disguise their Wi-Fi. And one of the terms you always use is hide it in plain sight. And I always think of the, you know, you got the lizard that kind of, you know, you can see that guy there, but then the, they can almost cloak themselves or camouflage themselves. Kind of like if you guys saw Jurassic World, what was it a Dominus Rex or whatever? He could cloak himself. Did I say it wrong? A Dominus Rex, yeah. So uh, he could cloak himself. So basically hiding it in plain sight. And really the challenge is, is people obviously want great Wi-Fi, but nobody wants to see it. And people are thinking, oh, yeah, they don't care. I mean, that's, I guess in this room, that's fine. But most of the time, people want great RF coverage, but don't want to have to actually know where it's at. And who cares about it? What? Are you laughing at me? Upper left corner of that image. Can we go back for a second? What's that? There's antennas up there. Oh, yeah, those are, we're testing those. Those are for you, Blake. <laughs> anyway, so who cares? Everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean everybody. I'm in Texas, and we do a lot of oil and gas, just my location. The oil and gas refineries care about aesthetics. They just do. Sometimes it may be security. They don't want people to know what's there. So they want us to, again, hide it in plain sight. We use that terminology a lot because you can't completely hide stuff. Sometimes you just have to make it look like the environment. So I'm going to talk about two ways that we've been doing it. We've been actually doing quite a bit of this just to kind of give you guys food for thought um, uh, for some different uh, verticals we've worked in. First way is using colored ray domes. I think everybody's kind of comfortable with the, ten, you know, the, the square enclosure, 10 by 12 by 6. I'm using that's American terms, not metric. But uh, people are used to the boxes. Now what we're seeing is most people say, you know, I don't want that box. I want a colored ray dome. I want something that's more, you know, thermoplastic form that can cover different uh, areas. Maybe like uh, these colored ray domes in the top left uh, to put the product in. If you see over here, and maybe you can see it on that handrail, that's a colored handrail antenna. You actually have the antennas inside, but the, the goal is how do you put it where it's hidden in plain sight, but yet still providing the coverage. This one on the bottom that kind of looks like a pyramid is actually very cool. That was put in a uh, basketball stadium uh, very recently, an NBA stadium in the northern United States. And what they wanted to do was put in an access point that had two radios, had coverage going down into the bowl of the stadium, and then another antenna that was covering the, the uh, concessionary to buy beer and drinks. So what they wanted to do, if you see in that top right-hand corner, I got the arrow uh, pointed. It's kind of hard to do it from here. But you'll see that, that basically that triangle is covering that. And the cool thing about it is we were able to cover it, paint it to match the paint. And then they actually numbered it. So now it's row 100, 101, 102. So they've actually used their wireless enclosure as part of the uh, facade and aesthetic. So color radome is very, very cool. Under seat. A lot of auditorium deployments and wireless. Again, you can see that, obviously, but it's hiding it in plain sight where people say, oh, okay, I don't even know what that is. They don't think much of it, but they have wireless underneath them. Uh, you got to keep it, what, I think it's 20, 20 millimeters away from certain parts of the body to make sure you, you don't hurt anybody. But uh, and you better make sure these things are waterproof, otherwise they're nice bathtubs for your access points. Uh, bollards, this is actually a, a pretty cool way. I don't know if you all have bollards out here. It's basically, they're about this tall. They can be different heights, and they cover like concrete posts. We're getting a lot of people want to use bollards uh, and put them in gardens or put them out in, you know, this area right here on the left is out in front of like a Starbucks to, op to do the open area. Again, you see the bollard, but it's something you're used to seeing, so you're hiding the wireless in plain sight. The other one on the right is actually a big health club uh, in the United States where they wanted to have coverage in the pool area. So again, they wanted to have the wireless up high enough. But again, you see it, but you don't see it. It's kind of hidden in plain sight. So that's kind of a way of doing it with, uh, with, uh, with radomes. Another way, which we're actually, uh, if you'd have told me two years ago we'd be doing this, I'd have told you crazy, is actually skinning of products. And what do I mean by that? First of all, I don't mean this. <laughs> I know of you people may think this is skinning. And, and this, keep this. So this guy works for me, I think. He, he says it's not him. But if anybody goes to WLP, see Phoenix, you'll see Smitty. It's, Smitty. it's not this either. I got this. This is one of, a, of, a, of Blake's uh, deployments where he was trying to skin it with Lumifor. That's happened to me on a survey. Oh, where they had it like this? Where somebody thought that would be funny to tinfoil wrap my I think that would be kind of funny if you were doing that. I get it. <laughs> 
anyway, so what are skins? Basically, what they are, uh, you guys are big into racing here, I know, in Europe. And I'm sure y'all skin the cars with logos or maybe skin the whole vehicle. It's the same technology where you're skinning the vehicle uh, to, to be able to you know, make it look nice if it's a car. But we're using the same technology to skin either access points. We're skinning the uh, actual enclosures. We're skinning uh, the antennas, you name it. And the cool thing is you can do anything. I mean, you can skin you know, Keith's face if we really wanted to. <laughs> You now have to do that. Yeah, oh, God, oh, my. That, that's what you're the man, dude. You, you, <laughs> we'll work together. Uh, anyway, uh, they can be changed out. You know, if you paint an access point, as an example, or paint an antenna, you usually void the warranty. You can't really do it again. I mean, you can, but it's not, not real good. The, with the skinning, you can change it out. So based on the environment, that deal I showed you, that stadium, they actually have some of them where they have advertisement, you know, Budweiser. Maybe next year it's Guinness. Maybe next year it's something else. And they can use it for They can pull it out. Uh, they're outdoor rated, obviously they put them on vehicles as well as uh, they don't affect the RF pattern, which is kind of cool. So kind of just some pictures. I mean, the pictures are fun to see. This one on the left, that's a, and I'm not promoting any one brand. I love all the radio guys, but the guy on the left is a Cisco 1542. We actually did it where it blended into the rocks. So when it was actually up, it looked really cool where it's just blent in. Uh, you can see some that have wood grain and the ones on the right, the top right is actually a rock. They were putting that kind of in a garden area, and they wanted it to look like a rock. Are you skinning the dipole skin? Well, dude, I'll, I'll skin anything. <laughs> anyway, th this is actually uh, that same pyramid one I had before that we actually skinned with a, a piece of wood. And the cool thing is all you need is a piece of wood about this big and a pitcher, and you can skin it to look pretty nice. The one on the, on the, uh, on the I guess looking here on the right, was actually a historical building. They wanted wireless, but they needed to make it blend in, so they sent us a brick and allowed us to skin it. I actually brought a couple of these things with me. I, I couldn't fly with too many of them, but I'll leave them up here just so you can, ah, dang it, just one second. I lost my, should have had these out, Keith. Lost my little microphone. But you know, here's kind of an example of, you know, one of the antenna skin. Now, if it blent in, it would look really cool. Uh, the one in the bot center, we sent out as a tweet, and somebody thought they'd be funny and say it looked like meatloaf. And it kind of does look like meatloaf after I saw it, but it was actually what the environment was. So we came up with a salad version. So, and we're working on our mashed potato will be the next one. But there was actually somebody wanted to put this in like a jungle area that's actually being deployed right now. Uh, this top, uh, that top one right there is that basically the one I showed you a minute ago with the wood grain installed. It was like in a sweet area at a real high-end uh, uh, facility. I think it was another sports arena. The one here on the bottom is actually that same Omni antenna that looked like meatloaf. We skinned it black to blend in the pole. Again, you can still see it, but it's, again, it's all about hiding it in plain sight. So really, at the end of the day, it's your imagination. You can do it anything in, in any way you really want to. And that's what's kind of cool about it is uh, we've had, again, all kinds of crazy stuff get skinned uh, and, and different devices. So as far as how to do it, I don't know the best way to, to skin like access points if we're working with you guys, but we can definitely do antennas and enclosures. Here's my contact information. I think you guys all have it. I'll leave these things up here if you guys want to come by and just look at them, and I'll take them up at the end of the day. Don't, they're not giveaways, so please <laughs> leave them here. Uh, another thing, we have been working with Annexer. I think that's been working pretty smooth for you guys. That was a request made a couple years ago, so I just want to remind everybody. And at the end of the day, I am an antenna guy, so I definitely want to make sure uh, we're promoting the antenna. So we have our antenna coupon code. If you guys need one, um, let us know. All right, that's it, ma'am. Any questions? <laughs>